Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex from Xtrades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Got some trading in last week. We did have a nice extended weekend also. Again, we just had one recently. So these little extended weekends have been nice. Get to rest your brain a little bit, but now we're getting back to it on Tuesday, June the 20th. So before we go into the setups this week, we're going to go ahead and go into the economic calendar. Tuesday, June 20th, we do have one Fed speaker, New York Fed President John Williams, but this might be a non-factor. The big thing is going on Wednesday, June the 21st. It's going to be Fed Chair Jerome Powell testifying to the House panel. And then he also is going to be testifying again on Thursday. And that's really... A, pretty much all we have in terms of the economic calendar. There's a couple other things, but I'd say Jerome Powell is the most important. A couple other things we have is initial jobless claims, just our usual. We also have existing home sales, so some real estate data. And then Friday, June the 23rd, we do have PMI. So we have services PMI and also manufacturing PMI. So not very data stacked this week, but we do have Jerome Powell speaking and this is post FOMC. So keep in mind, FOMC decision was already made. They did a pause. They did not raise interest rates or cut them. They pretty much paused and we're pretty much just waiting for the next meeting now. Honestly, Jerome Powell didn't really give too much in the press conference to really make too much of a big decision. I feel like he's been kind of beating around the bush and not answering so much because he really doesn't want any turbulence in the market. And also, he kind of just wants to keep U.S. Treasury yields kind of where they're at. So that could be the reasoning. It could not be. It's just kind of speculation. But maybe we'll get something that we didn't hear at the press conference in this Senate panel and also the House panel in front of Congress. All right, and now we'll go ahead and get into the setup. So I do have four this week. Last week, we only had three. So last week, we did have DVN. We had RCL and also DAL. RCL and DAL did not get the pullback I was hoping for. DAL did break out of that downtrend. Our risk off area was about 40, 30. It did break over that, so that didn't pan out. RCL had a slight pullback. I still feel like that could be a good one for a further output swing. And then DVN had a short-term breakout over 50, 17, I believe, and it had a nice little 2% run. So you would have had to be quick pretty much on anything that we put out last week. So I'm hoping this week's will be a little bit better. Our first one here, we're going to be looking at Vales. This is a steel company. You can see it's got a test one, you got a test two, you got a test three downtrend right here. And it finally was able to break out of that. Didn't really have too much resistance on test three, just had a slight red candle before breaking out. You can see the breakout really doesn't have that great of volume either. So that's kind of a little bit iffy, but it's still breaking out. You got a positive KDJ here. Chart pretty much on the one day is a little bit oversold. This thing has been getting beat down since February, 2023. So maximum for price targets. Obviously you do have your 200 simple moving average here. This is your longer term one day simple moving average. You can see it's acted as support before. Bounced here, bounced here, bounced here. Also had a slight resistance here. So you do want to use this as a price target. Maximum, like, you know, eventually I could get it up to the 200 SMA, but it probably try to reject about there. So I really couldn't put it any higher until it got over that. You can see there's really no resistance. There's really nothing here, just sell imbalance. There's a little gap right here above that. But like I said, it would have to get over that 200 SMA to even get into that gap. But the breakout's looking pretty good. I feel like this is more of a discount compared to the rest of the market. I mean, all of techs and other high growth names, I mean, they're just all breaking out and breaking highs and stuff. This is kind of more at a discount. You can see it's kind of a, you know near the bottoms of its chart kind of mid-range it's not breaking out or anything over highs it's just breaking out of this downtrend line and i do like these downtrend line plays for breakouts because they are more of a discount and you're not you know chasing that overextension to the upside so that's what i like about these kind of setups because you're not you're not chasing you know the range breakouts or anything like that you just you know you're trading off the downtrend breakout this was a pretty long downtrend for the most part i mean it's started all the way in february now ending in june so you know about four months so it's a pretty good downtrend line could end up, you know, running to the upside here. Obviously the sector as a whole, you probably want to keep an eye on like CLF and X. Those are two tickers that are also steel companies and they kind of do move hand in hand. So keep an eye on that. But Veil here, looking at calls. All right. And we do have another long here that I'm kind of interested in because I did look at the Hong Kong stock index. I think it's ticker symbol HSI on trading view. It has a very similar breakout to this. And this is pretty much a test one, test two, test three. You can probably count this as a test four downtrend breakout. 
So it looks pretty good. Volume picked up just a tad over average, but nothing crazy. Likely this would probably be a further out swing trade. If you go to the one week chart here, it honestly looks a little bit better. You do have a very oversold name here, to be honest. It's, I mean, it's just been getting slammed ever since 2021. And it's just now starting to kind of make its bottom, kind of make a stand at these lows. So that's what I like about this one. You can see the KDJ on the one week is starting to curl up. So you do have a little green signal here, meaning that it crossed over. You had one right here when it had this short term pop and you had a crossover over here when it had a really nice rally. So these one week KDJ signals are pretty good. You do just want to pair it with price action as well. And price action wise, we are seeing this one day break or I'm sorry, this one week breakout. Well, it's also a one day breakout, but Either way, pretty good. Stock's pretty oversold. China as a whole has kind of just been recovering their economy after COVID. So there's still a lot of upside, to be honest. And, you know, China as a whole, you know, could eventually recover and start seeing those old highs. But obviously, it's going to take a really long time. This is a very big retrace it would have to do to get back up to its previous values. Price targets over time. Obviously, you're looking at this most recent resistance. It's going to be a 104.85. That probably would need to be like an all-time price target. And it could take a little bit to get up there. This is a one week chart. So I'm, I don't see this happening just in one candle. Uh, I mean, it could, it's the stock market. Stock market's crazy, but you do want to, you know, kind of be realistic, pretty much have lower expectations. And, you know, if it, if it ends up hitting, you know, it just feels that much better when your expectations are a little bit lower. You don't want to expect anything out of the market. And it's a little bit more rewarding when, you know, it does exceed your expectations. So Baba here looking good for calls. I would say this is probably a further out swing trade. You probably want to buy a couple months out on this one just because it's still a fresh breakout. And if you know breakouts like this, obviously they can kind of pull back a little bit. They'll try to back test the line before going higher, but not all of them do that. But they do have a slight resistance after breaking out just to, you know, reload. And then eventually, you know, it could go a little bit higher, but it's likely that it could have that little pullback first. And that's where you could enter. But if you buy time, buy a couple months out, give it some time. It won't really matter where you buy if you start small and then you could add again on dips. So that's really the only major resistance. There's that 104.85. There's obviously this major supply zone here on the one day. So this is a rally based drop supply zone all the way from March 2023. And that starts about 104.34. So you got 101.34 up to 105.05. And that's pretty much your high. And that meets right with that 104.85 resistance we were looking at. So that's your one day supply zone. So if you want to lower it from 104.85 just to that 101s, that's a that's a good price target because likely it could see some resistance right at the start of the supply zone of that base candle we just marked all the way from March. And that was right over here. And that's that rally base drop supply zone. So don't expect this price target to hit this week. Keep your expectations low because it... it it did just break out, so could have a little pullback before trying to go higher. If you go to the one week, obviously this is a great setup to give time on because the chart's very oversold overall. You can see it's retraced a lot and now starting to make you know some bottoms here. You get a nice established support about 79.48, probably just round that up to 80s. So 80 flats, probably a great support for right now. You got a holding here, you got a holding here, you got a holding here, and also holding again right here. So 80s, pretty established. So Baba here, looking at calls, just be patient on it. All right, and next, this is actually a little bit counter to the Baba calls we were looking at because TSM here is a semiconductor play. So obviously it's been running, you know, with the likes of Nvidia, you know, AMD and other, you know, semiconductor plays that are pretty much speculating on AI. Everybody's in that AI frenzy. So this has not had a huge correlation with, you know, Baba or any of the other Chinese names, obviously Taiwan is still kind of trying to establish its independence. There's a lot of politics behind that. China doesn't think they're an independent state. They believe that, you know, Taiwan's a part of China. So there's a little bit of beef behind that. But either way, TSM is an Asian stock and it will kind of move with Asian markets. So if I added a BABA chart compared to this TSM chart, you know, TSM is obviously outperformed BABA and it, the correlation is not, you know, spot on. So it doesn't have to move with BABA or anything like that. It's just, you know, sometimes they will tend to kind of move together overall on the higher time frames. But TSM here, we're going to be looking at puts. And the reason for that is because you do have this 61.8 play coming up. I've covered the 61.8% retracement on Fibonacci levels 
couple times in these videos. One we were looking at on Google, still trying to kind of reject about there. And I showed some examples on like FXI and HYG and other 61.8 plays where it's rejected. And you can see it's pretty much already retraced, you know, 61.8% of this move from all time highs down to these most recent lows. And I actually found this, uh, somebody asked about it in the chat and I looked at it and I was like, I, I had no idea it had already retraced this much. So you can see this one week candle here too. It's really not the most bullish. I mean, you got a really huge upper shadow wick. You do have it pushing down all the way from this all the way into Friday's close. And it's just not the most bullish candle. So obviously your signal for puts would need to be under 104.31. We'll add an alert, we'll just put Add alert, we'll put breakdown, breakdown, weekly low, create. So we'll wait for that to break. If we go down to the smaller time frames here, we can go down to the one hour. We do have a little gap right here. So this is mostly what I'm eyeing. So this TSM play would probably just be a short term, you know, put scalp if it decides to fill this gap. I feel like it could be a decent one. You do have another small one right here. So it's kind of just got a, a bunch of little gaps that could end up filling. So it looks pretty good. As long as you get that signal under 104.31, which is also last week's low that will, you know, that could fill up the gap. And obviously, you know, once it fills the whole thing, it does have a tendency to try to bounce. So you would need to be careful with that. But like I said, wait for the signal. And I pretty much said that with any put trade that we've been looking at lately these past couple of weeks because you, you i mean you do have a lot of dip buyers still showing up you got pretty low volatility i don't know why the vix is showing 1419 it did not close at that area there must be a issue with the data so vix is still very low it did not close up 4.88 percent i don't believe with puts you do have to be really careful you just want to be taking quick profits you want to play the breakdowns and then, you know, take profit as soon as possible because people are still trying to buy the dip. I personally think everything's a little bit overextended, which is why I haven't been trading these breakouts. I've been waiting for dips in tech names and stuff and waiting to get into demand zones before buying. And we just haven't been able to do that. So it's coming with a little bit of opportunity cost, but I think it's worth it. I'm okay with missing out a little bit and really not buying into the hype. I'm okay to day trade that kind of stuff, but for swing trades, you do want to try to find discounts, try to get good entries and to get better returns. So for TSM here, like I said, it's kind of a little bit counter to the BABA long we're looking at, but BABA is a one week time frame setup and also a one day time frame setup. So it could take some time to play out to the upside and TSM, we're just kind of looking at this short term gap, looking for that move under 104.31. And if the market decides to pull back, we will have this in our toolbox and we'll be there ready to you know play some puts on assuming we can get under 104.31. So keep an eye on that level. And like I said, you know, just make sure you're taking profits quick if we get this signal under that. Don't stay in it for too long. If you really wanted to get longer term puts, you're gonna buy like really far out, like at least two or three months of expiration just to deal with any upside risk. So TSM here, looking at puts. All right, and for our last ticker here, this is our last individual name, and then we'll go into the indexes, the VIX and the dollar. So Amazon here, you can see it's getting very tight. We do have this uptrend line. You got a test here, you got tests here, three, four, five. So this trend line has been pretty strong. We didn't even go down to the four hour just to see it a little bit better. So this is our current most recent trend line that we're watching. You can see it's getting really close to breaking. You do have multi tops here at 127.40. You got one here, and then also there's just like a peak at 128.40 as well, about a dollar above that 127.40. So it looks like it's struggling at this. You could argue that this could end up being an ascending triangle. Ascending triangles are naturally bullish, but they're not confirmed until you get that blow off top. And that would be over 128.40. If you even did a quick Google search on ascending triangles, you'll see that the pattern is not confirmed until it breaks out. Another fact about ascending triangles is they are bilateral, so they can break either way. So if we do get a confirmation of this trend line breaking, that is, you know, technically it's a, a bearish pattern now because it broke the uptrend line. So you can see it's already trying to kind of dip below this very briefly. If you go to the one hour candles, we did close slightly under it. And this is the same four hour uptrend that we we're just looking at. So this could break down. I mean, if we open outside of the downtrend line on the shorter term time frames, you could see a quick flush down to 124.12. And I say that because there's a there's a short term support here. We have another wick area right here at 123.19. And then pretty much this low candle, it's about 122s or so, but I would just stick to the 123.19, the 124.12, and see where it goes from there before you know trying to shoot any lower. But like I said, if we open under this Monday and for some reason can't you know reclaim it like this there's a good chance it could flush back down and maybe try to make support about 124.12 or maybe try to try to hold up about there 
if it can't hold up under that, then you do have your next level at 123.19. So that's kind of the thing with this setup. You're just gonna wanna make sure, you know, it opens up, stays outside of the trend line. Make sure you go on your chart and draw this if you are watching and you do wanna keep an eye on this. Just draw your trend line from Tuesday, May the 2nd at about 9.30. And then your second point is just gonna be right here. Uh, it's gonna be about Thursday the 25th and that'll just take you all the way up. And then if you didn't know, you can, you know, double click go to trend line, just extend the line right, and it'll take it all the way up. And that's how you draw trend lines pretty much. And that's how you kind of keep them on your chart. And you'll know, you know, when it comes back to test it, you'll know that it's there and you could, you know, use it as a guide. So like I said, it's breaking under this very briefly. This little range got really tight and it did start rejecting this 127.40. So rightfully so, it did start rejecting about here because it failed over here twice. So now we just need to see this trend line fail. And you know, you could see that short term 124.12 and the 123.19. So this would be just a little short term scout play potentially. If it did get under 123.19, you know, that's another $2 below until you get to the demand zone and bounce from last time. And that demand zone is right here. It's a rally base rally zone and it bounced really hard after this huge sell day back to the upside so this this little demand zone is pretty important and eventually it could hit if you get under that 123.19 we're looking at on the one hour and like i was just showing you your 123.19 is right here just this little support so that's for amazon looking at puts just make sure it stays under the trend line to validate your thesis if not you know just you know throw it in the garbage because if it can reclaim or get back over there's likely going to be an ascending triangle formation and it could just go for a blow off top so you need to either wait for it to break over 128.41 in that instance or you just need to wait for it to get back under the trend line again and try again so these little tight ranges can be a little tricky but if you're using the trend line as a guide you should be able to make somewhat of a rational decision. So Amazon here, looking at puts. All right, next, we're going into the SPY. I'm gonna stay on the one hour time frame for this, just like we were looking at on Amazon. The reason for that is because on the one day, there's really no like visible levels from previous areas. If I go to the one day right now, I could show you. I mean, there's levels like maybe about here. It's gonna be like 450 and then, you know, 462 or so. But we're not really near that right now. So I'm gonna go down to the shorter term time frames just because you can kind of get a better picture of most recent because previous levels from you know 2022 have kind of already been breached. So we'll have to wait for it to kind of get closer to those again before before looking at the one day again. So you can see we do have this pretty steep uptrend line. I mean you gotta test one, you gotta test two, you gotta test three, hold up there, you gotta test four, and you gotta test five. So this uptrend has been pretty good. We do have a very recent resistance here. Where I'm circling at 439.06. You have a peak here at 443.90. And then just below that, there is a support at 433.59. So these three, I'll focus on these three. We can even mark this green as support, mark this one green as a potential support. And then you do have your most recent peak at 443.90. So we'll have to get under this 439.06, which is previous resistance now trying to maybe act as support there's a good chance you could see it you know a break retest and it could try to hold up about here i think the most likely scenario is it's going to test this trend line eventually and maybe try to hold up there if you really want to go short i personally wait for this trend line to break we can even go to add alert and we'll just call it breakdown so this is your one hour trend line if you want to go to your chart your first point is going to start on may the 24th and your second point is going to be on june the 8th and then just extend your line and it'll take you all the way up here so that's your trend line of focus i would wait for that to break before going short otherwise keep this 439.06 on watch on monday if it can hold up here there's a good chance you could take calls for a scalp because it might try to bounce back up and you know retest the 443 as a classic you know break and retest strategy so watch that 439.06 that's pretty important if the 439.06 broke and the trend line broke that obviously takes you you know to your next point at 433.59 that's pretty much my max range my max low if that broke for the week i couldn't really put it much lower than that honestly i don't even think it, it will hit this this week to be honest we only have four days volatility is pretty low so but i would like to mention after opex the monthly opex the options expiration the market can be a little weak and that's usually due to portfolio rebalancing after all that money expired so we could see a little bit of weakness this week but i personally wouldn't expect much until you know jerome powell testifies it's gonna be on wednesday and thursday so tuesday 
going into Tuesday, our first day of the week, just watch the 439.06 for the spy. If it could hold up there, that's a good level to go for, you know, some upside, you know, scalp some calls and take advantage while you can because this level would be holding up as new support. That's your previous resistance acting as new support. Otherwise, like I said, just wait for that trend line to break and you could go short or you can wait for the trend line to test. That could be another area you could try to go for a bounce off of. I personally like this 439.06 better. If it was, if that was to hold up, I feel pretty good about trying, you know, a little call scalp to the upside. So that's for the SPY. Just keep these three, the 433.59, the 439.06, and the 443.90 in focus. All right, next we're going to go into the QQQ. So this is kind of similar. We really don't have any one day levels nearby. So we're just going to go ahead and go with the one hour for the short term. We do have a similar structure. So you got the 366.19. You have this new low or this recent low at 360.42. And then there's a peak here at 372.85. Go ahead and mark this resistance red. So this trend line here and this 366.19 is obviously your closest support. It would have to hold that up in order to go higher. I feel like if it can get, you know, close to the trend line at least there's a good chance that this test three right here on this trend line it, it'd probably hold up um before trying to fail if anything this is very overextended though if we go to the one day i mean the rsi is very overbought it just looks ridiculous so not the best long uh for risks risk to reward so that's where it's kind of tough like where do you want to buy do you want a discount or do you want to chase the breakouts that's kind of the question you have to ask yourself i like the discounts and the dips better they help me sleep at night a little bit better and they're just a little bit easier to trade because you don't have to worry about the rug getting pulled as much because you're already buying pretty low so you just keep your stop loss relatively close and you know if it fails it fails but if you're getting at a good spot like this 366.19, that'd be a good area to look at, or the trend line. That's better than, you know, chasing this breakout all the way up in the 370s. So that's kind of the question you got to ask yourself. That's all trading is. Is this a good spot to buy? And, you know, just managing your risk. So like the SPY, we'll just have these three levels of focus, the 360.42, the 366.19, and the 372.85. Those will be your one hour levels of focus your more short term levels because the one day there's really nothing to really go off right now i mean we could look real quick so you can see the qqq one day i mean it's just very overextended why would you want to you know buy all the way up here for previous levels you could see i mean there's only this 334.42 that's the most pretty much the most important inflection point and that's not all the way till down there so you can see why we're going down to the one hour there's really nothing of substance over here i mean you do have this 357.50 that we focused on i think a couple of weeks ago it's just a little short-term resistance but nothing major i mean you don't really got anything here on the one day there's a little demand zone right here it's a little rally based rally demand zone it's at about 363.20s and that's really all you got i mean you'd have to wait for it to you know get down here or get to demand to be a good discount to buy the dip and that kind of just aligns with what we we're looking at we're pretty much looking at this low right here at 360.40s, we're looking at 366.19, and then looking at 372.85 on the one hour. And you also got your one hour trend line, and that's really about it. But this 357.50 is a one day level, so we'll go ahead and mark it. We'll even type something in. We'll just put one day resistance. So that's your major nearby level, would probably be the best discount area. This green area is your demand zone. This would be another good discount area to add up. Uh, it's about 363 so otherwise you know just focus on these three levels we're looking at 372.85 366 and then you know 360s or so and the uptrend line on the one hour that's really all you should focus on for now all right next we're going into the iwm so last week i really didn't have a setup for this i mentioned that this 38.2 percent fib had to get broken over in order to get more if I go to the one day, you can see, I mean, it's just been struggling at the 38.2, which is why I didn't really like a setup too much. I think last week we were just looking at Friday's low. If it, I said if it can make, you know, support off Friday's low, which was this area right here, about 184.40s, they, you know, you could look at longs if it makes a base. And you can see, I mean, it did make a nice little bounce here off that same area. So, I mean, it was tradable, but you just had to stick to day trades. Not a good entry for swing trades. Now you can see it's kind of trying to make a multi-top or just a general consolidation area. You don't really have anything confirmed. It had to go under 184.40s, you know, to go lower. And it would have to break, you know, over 189s or 190 to go higher. So it's kind of just in a consolidation range, which is another reason why you really shouldn't look at a setup on this yet. You know, wait for it to break 184, 184.45. You just put breakdown, make an alert there. 
So you have that set if it wants to break down that could make a good put trade and then otherwise you know to the long side i really don't like anything to the long side because this supply zone it's a nice little rally based drop zone just a disgusting sell imbalance right here that's probably why it's struggling to get up there i mean this whole area supply stacked you got you know a struggle here and you got a struggle here and you got a struggle here and you could just see all the white base candles to where it failed to go higher and that's how you identify supply zones you just want to find you know a base candle where pretty much price had a run up and then just had a huge struggle and big sell imbalance to the downside and that's your supply zones that's where price had an inflection point likely from institutional investors and wall street so that's why i don't like longs in this right now we are focused on the 180s or the 179s or so and you know we're looking for a long if it broke out of that it already did that you know within two days so you had to be really quick on that but and, you know the setup was there and we mentioned it and it was tradable but now you know kind of at an inflection point and you don't really want to do anything here yet just wait for that 184.45 to break down or you know wait for some good evidence of supply getting broke over or even you know a, a convincing move over 190 at least so iwm here nothing again this week you could just keep trading off the 184 45 if you want to you know try to take a support play and look at calls once it gets down there that's you know it's pretty good it obviously worked last week right here on wednesday so could be worth a look but otherwise uh for swing trades kind of off limits because you don't have any confirmation yet all right and next we're going into the vix so you can see why why the hell is it say 1419 this one day candle clearly closed at about 1350 so this is wrong this is not correct so just kind of ignore that because it's not what the chart is showing so that 1350 is actually you know a most recent low that's coming from you know june 9th and june 8th this little area right here it's kind of a short-term bounce spot nothing major only lasted two days so you do want to keep an eye on this 1350 just because it did have a short-term bounce for two days if that can hold up obviously you know that could take you back up to the same area at about 15 flat but if it breaks back lower obviously you know market can scream higher if it keeps breaking these you know making lower lows lower highs you kind of don't have a choice but to think the market's gonna you know go up a little bit at least on the short term but vix is at a very vulnerable spot here it's the lowest it's been in three years and you do have to kind of question why it's so low it's because there's a lack of fear in the market there's no surprise factor and you can also assume that hedging is very cheap and you know puts 30 days out or so are pretty much the cheapest it's been in a really long time in terms of implied volatility so that's worth noting and it could be good for your portfolio if you're majority long to have that insurance just in case because yes i know the market keeps screaming higher and you know it's just been non-stop but eventually you know the vix does have a mean regression and volatility comes back for a short while and then you know it'll come back down eventually but it does have a mean regression usually and your mean regression obviously you can use you know like a 200 sma you could use a 50 sma or 50 ema on the one day you can use the 2022 to 2023 average close uh if you want i can get you that data i manually type it in and have it plot into an average on my little numbers app on macbook and right now the number is at 2372 so your average close all the way from 2022 when they started raising rates the federal reserve and you know when we had recession fears and all that crap in 2022 to current it's about 2372 so this is stupid low I mean, this is your average close for the last couple of years. This is where we're at now. So eventually it does come back up for a mean regression. Just, you know, it might take some time. Obviously it's not, you know, always going to happen right away. We're really not in that extreme of volatility anymore. And market's been going a little bit slower. There hasn't been those like violent snapbacks, violent drops, violent, you know, spikes and stuff like that yet. It's kind of just been a slow grind up and it's likely due to the VIX being low. So just watch the 1350 if that holds up. That's a pretty good sign that, you know, volatility com could come back short term. If that breaks, you know, expect it to keep making lower lows and lower highs. And I'll just have the same lows of focus as we did last week. If you want to go back and watch the 1410 was a level from 2021 that we highlighted. The 1473 is another 2021 level that we highlighted. And then 1553 is the must reclaim level. You have to get back over this for volatility to spike like meaningfully. That comes from this recent low right here. It would have to get over that. So that's why this is green because it's the most important. 
And then you just have your standard 20 flat as your second most important area. It will have to get over that for, you know, more serious volatility to come back into the market. You need to see like one or two closes with, you know, good conviction for volatility to come back. And I say this every video, so it might seem a little repetitive, but the 20 level is a very psychological level. And once it gets over that, it's a good sign that volatility is going to come back. But otherwise, 1553 to 1831, you can see you don't have anything here. Your 1831 is your two resistance points right here. So the 1553 to 1831, all free space. That's why I say if it can get back over 1553, that's all free space and it could fill back up. So just keep an eye on that. Same levels as last week. Just now you have a 1350 to keep an eye on. All right, next we're going to the DXY, the US dollar. So last week, I'm pretty sure we just had the usual 103 level in focus. I pretty much mentioned it would need to get back under that 103 for the market, you know, to start going back up. It was able to do that Thursday and it sold off pretty hard. I mean, we closed down almost a 1% move on the dollar. So I did mention currencies are very uh, vulnerable and very sensitive to data also. And we had a very data filled week last week. So that's why you see this big drop in the US dollar. So you don't really have that clear of a signal this week. Last week, it was definitely the 103 level. We wanted to see that either holding or breaking. Now we did break it. I feel like, you know, the dollar could go down maybe a little bit lower down, you know, back to 101s or so. And that's coming, you know, just from this general area where it's got strong support. They're kind of just mid range right now. So I can't really say too much about the dollar this week. Obviously, it would have to get back over 103 you know, start being bullish again. Right now, it's kind of just making like a little bear flag. I mean, you got a big drop. You got three little minor updates. Likely, we could see it try to, you know, fall back down. And that would take you to, you know, 101, 02, and, you know, just the 100 area in general, which is this area right here. And I've showed you why the 103 area is important like a million bajillion times. It's this COVID peak from 2020. It's right here. And that's why 103 is important. So now that you see we closed under it on the one week, I mean, that's, you know, some signs that, you know, it's coming back under 103 with conviction and it could stay under 103. But like I said, likely it would just probably come back to 101s or 100 maximum and probably try to hold up about there. But that's really all I can kind of go by right now. I mean, it's not really, don't really have a pattern or a breakout or anything on this right now. Originally, we had a breakout right here. So we were focused on this a couple of weeks ago and Honestly, I thought this would be the signal for the market to go lower and it, the market just didn't care. So you might have like a one or two day pullback, but it eventually screamed higher and it did not care about this dollar breakout. So you do have to be careful using this as an indicator. I've pretty much been repeating that the last couple of weeks. You do want to see like the VIX go up and the DXY go up in order, you know, to kind of get that security, that volatility is coming back, you know, just using either of these by themselves. It can kind of be a waste of time and you definitely want to keep and eye on the levels and right now i mean we don't really have anything here we just have the you know 103 breaking that's a good sign for the dollar to go lower and you know next level is the 101s or so and then vix you saw obviously it has to hold 1350 in order to go higher and has to break under 1350 to go lower most important level on the vix was the you know the 1550s so you kind of want to conjoin those if you want to see the market go lower You'd want to see it, you know, reclaiming 103 and you'd want to see VIX reclaiming, you know, like 1553 or so, maybe get over 15 flat at least. And that's a good sign for volatility. If you want to see market go higher, you want to see it, you know, staying under 1350. You want to see dollar getting under maybe this most recent little kind of little bounce area at 102 and that'll just take you down to 101s. So that's really all I got for this. Like I said, just conjoin it, you know, with the VIX, kind of keep an eye on both of these at the same time because by themselves the correlation has been weird equities haven't really cared about the dollar too much to be honest it's been very strange uh you know some days it, it totally respects it like thursday we had you know a big big red day in the dollar and you know the market did pretty good so you can see thursday here on spy you know up 1.24 percent so big rally while the dollar was down so it does have you know it's days where the correlation is good but sometimes Lately, it's not been, you know, spot on. So you do want to, you know, keep those two in mind and just keep an eye on the levels, especially. So that's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our extra YouTube channel. I'm going to get this chopped up, edited, and sent out. I love you guys, and I'm out.